right, excuse me. Oh, he's oh, he's good. Good. Uh, just a minute, please. Thank you. Mr. Marker. Oh, hello, Mr. Rainsworth. You know our local editor, I believe. Mm, how do you do? Are you Ooh. looking for clues? Just come look something up in the reference library. Yeah. One of your advertisers. Private inquiry agent, if you can believe it. Now, this is my assistant, John Ingleby. He's done all the display work. Looks very good, Ingleby. Get them settled down and we'll declare the fun and games open, shall we? I say, this will win my vote. <laughs> <laughs> Here, we show me the rest of it sometime. I know her. Ah, well, lucky you. Uh, am I locked but in? But I didn't know about this. What should you have? It's my wife. Oh. Oh, she's coming to the office, will you? Well, I'm in a bit oh, of a hurry. We've got tonight, lots of... It's a copy, isn't it? A copy of her painting in the National Gallery, isn't it? I, mean, I know what it is, and I know who it is. Are you sure it's your wife? Quite sure. I didn't even know you were married. Yes, ten years. Oh, well, that might be older than that. My wife's still a young woman. I know she gets bored at home. She used to work, but I never thought... Well, there's bound to be an explanation. All you have to do is ask her. Yeah? You don't ask who took it. Oh. Well, who did take it? Entry 68. It's the Bromsgrove Venus. I Submitted by John Ingleby. Good night. That doesn't necessarily follow, She's does it? He's a beautiful woman. He's a good-looking young man. He takes this, of course it follows. I see, because you want it to, huh? Look, I love her. I'd do anything in the world for her. Except forgive her, if the need arose. It's arisen. Look, I want to know, to be sure. Well, isn't that your speciality? And I think you'd do much better to have a talk to her, uh, have a row, a cup of cocoa, and make it up. I can't. How can I go on living with her? Oh, now, wait but a minute. Pretend I've never seen it? How can I go on working with him? Yes. Yes, I see your point. Mr. Ingleby? Yes? Uh, your boss sent me, Mr. Ainsworth. Um, can I come in? What about? Thank you. Nice. Very nice, especially for an assistant librarian. <laughs> ah. Photography, your hobby? One of them. Oh, I was enjoying that. Why has Mr. Ainsworth sent you? Is something wrong? Well, it depends. What's wrong to him might not be wrong to you and me. It's late for riddles and I'm expecting somebody. Then I won't waste any time. What about that? What about it? Will you put it in for the competition? Oh, it's good. The trouble is, Mr. Ainsworth doesn't seem to think so. A limited mind, maybe. Uh, did you take it here? Is he making a fuss? Well, it's more than a fuss. You see, the whole thing might end up in divorce. Then he'll make himself an even bigger laughing stock, won't he? You after his job? Not necessarily. Hey, what's the matter then? Don't you like him? Oh, I see. One of the contemptuous generation. What about Mrs. Ainsworth? What camera do you use? Single lens reflex. 
You like Japanese things, don't you? But you didn't take the Bromsgrove Venus with us, did you, or any other camera? Your visitor. I'll see you. You didn't tell me your name, didn't I? Call me Myrtle. Oh. Did you like it? Did you like it? Yes, it was very good. Very good? What kind of compliment is that? I'm sorry. That's better. You can sit down and I'll bring you a coffee. Darling, what's the matter? Nothing, just a hard day. So, what is this hard day you've had? Miss Savage has been tiresome, perhaps? No, no, just, just middle age catching up with me. You shouldn't feel so sorry for yourself. You still have me? Yes. How was your day? Your well, housewife all days are the same. No visitors? <laughs> I wish there were. Why don't you come and sit down over here where it's warm? No, no, that's your chair. Yours, mine. After ten years of marriage, we have separate things. Come on. Right. There. Thank you. What got away? Oh, I sent off for some knives and forks. Four tinned meat labels and twelve and six, and we get knives and forks. Do we have to eat the tinned meat? I should think not. I give it to the cat. Oh, that reminds me. I must go and get her in. <coughs> oh, sorry. Ridgeon. Is that the other shop? Oh. Are you Miss Ridge? Do you mind? Oh, I'm Miss Boothroyd. We only see salesmen brightest. No, not a salesman. Mr. Ingleby sent me. John Ingleby. You supply him with film and equipment. That's right. The amount he gets through, you'd think he was trade. Ah. <laughs> oh, did Mr. Ridge do that? He's bad enough without that sort of carry-on. He only develops and prints. Quite a specialist. Any of these for sale? Is Irene? Not on your life. If he gets anything in he fancies, he does an extra print for himself. What's going there? What was there? Somebody pinched it while I was in the back, took it down and went with it. Yeah, what was it? A lady lying down. Back view, of course. But don't you know who pinched it? If I did, they'd hear a mouthful. Well, can't Mr. Rich do another one? We haven't got the negative no more. Who has then? Who are you? Do you want to buy something? Well, just like ladies lying down. It, uh, it wasn't one of Mr. Ingleby's negatives by any chance, was it? It does his own. Just buys his film and paper here. Yeah? Uh, whose was it, then? We charge top prices, Mr. Mark. And people get top work and discretion. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, perhaps we'll meet again someday. Perhaps when we do, you'll spend some money. I don't know how you can place him. Or you, me, Myrtle. <sighs> Uh, what time did you finish? No, I just want you to come on a visit with me, that's all. Sorry, another time. It's about the Bronze Grove Venus. <laughs> Our middle-aged gent hasn't shown his face outside the office all day. You pinched it, didn't you? And Ridge's camera shot. You saw it, you recognised who it was, and you pinched it. That's slander. I reckon pinching is just about the worst thing you can do in local government, isn't it? Half past five? Six. Half past five. I'm shot. Mr. Ingleby. Sorry, I was just closing up. I know, it's rather important. It I... was Mr. Ingleby that took your lady lying down, I'm afraid. He, uh, he put it in for a competition under his own name. He never. Oh, yes, he did. 
He's awfully sorry now, aren't you? Can't sleep at nights, can you? I... I want to apologise. Well, it don't matter to me much. Old Ridgeon's here at the moment. I know, he means to the real owner. He wants to apologise to the man who took the photograph, the fellow who gave you the negative in the first place. Don't you? Can I? I'll return the picture as soon as I can. Well, it is for you, not for him. Then why should I be interested? Mr. Ridge always called it Lady with the Bottom, so I should be able to find it. You'll feel much better afterwards. Lady with the Bottom. It was a long time ago. Oh, well, it, it wasn't for an enlargement at all. He is naughty. What was it for? Contact prints. Six dozen. Quite enough bottoms, I'd say. Oh, so should I? Who were they for? Which right, he hasn't got a pencil. Box 30, Nora's Top Shop, Palmerston Road. It's an accommodation address. No name. No. You'll have to write, won't you? How's the competition going? The photographs, I must go and see them. That's the one you didn't come yesterday. Why? Because. Why, Paul? There were crowds. What are you doing? I'm sending off for a free sample of furniture polish. So, does it matter? No. Paul. I must go. Paul, why are you different? Last night, this morning, I'm you... not. You tell me if something is wrong. Unless you tell me first. I know what it is. I spent too much money on the housekeeping. I hadn't but noticed. Lately I hadn't noticed. By... Maria, I, I love you. You know that, don't you? And I love you. Oh, darling, tell me what's wrong. Why are you sad? Not sad, particularly. Just, just middle-aged. Oh, Paul! The paper! Is there anything else, Mr. Ainsworth? Uh, no, no, I, I'm sorry, Miss Savage, that's all, thank you. Uh, Miss Savage? Uh, yes, Mr. Ainsworth? Would you give me a phone number, please? Uh, uh, Mr. Marker, Mr. Frank Marker. He has an office quite near here. Frank Marker, yes, Mr. Ainsworth. Sharp. Oh, I didn't hear the bell. What do you want? Ah, shut up. He wants his breakfast. Uh, I think I'll be a bit too tough, don't you? Thanks is over here. Now, don't smoke, thanks. What then? Well, I see you develop films. That's over here. Yeah, I don't want any. No, look at you yourself. Here. I mean, on the premises. No, don't be daft. I take them around the chemist. Now, do you want something good, don't you? I've got Percy's grub on the stove. Ah, that's what I can smell. 
Um, I think you also take in letters for people, don't Four you? Four bob a week. Right. What name? Uh, Frank Marker. You come and collect. I don't have no truck with readdressing and that. And you don't come Sunday. Hey, don't lose that. There's some life left in that. Yeah, so there is in me if I have any more lip out of you, mate. Can I get a box number? Yeah. 36. Thank you. My age. Uh, <laughs> a friend of mine has his letters sent here. I'd, um, I'd rather like to get in touch with him, you know. What name? Oh, well, I don't know. He chops and changes all the time. I never know what he's calling himself from one case <laughs> to the next. Box 30. Oh, shut your hole before I put me boat in you. You should drop your friend a line. Oh, I'd rather go and see him personally, but the trouble is I don't know what he's calling himself. Now, see here, you cunning bastard. I've been outsmarting gets like you before you was born. You're the copper. I'm not. I tell you no, what no, I want to know. Go on, up yeah. it. All I want is and my And take your questions name. somewhere else. I, I don't know what he's calling himself. Percy, Kevin, go on, get out of here. And don't come back. I don't want coppers in a respectable shop. Mrs. Ainsworth? I thought it was. Mr... John Ingleby. You want to see Mr. Ainsworth? He's got someone with him. Oh, no, no, no. I was just doing some shopping. I thought I would come and look at the pictures. <laughs> the good wife takes an interest in her husband's work. No? Uh, no pin-ups, I'm afraid. <laughs> Not that you'd be interested in those. There was one. One? Pin up. It was removed. Who well, removed it? I really don't know. Perhaps someone pinched it. We get all sorts in here. Oh, yes, I, I hope someone pinched it. Hope? I mean, expect. Uh, even now, my English is not perfect, Mr. Ingleby. Is there a, a catalogue? No. No names? Well, how do you know who took them? It's all anonymous. How do you give the price? Well, the only list is held by your husband. Good morning, Mrs. Ainsworth. There's no explaining it away now. She knows about it. Yes, but it's only a photograph, isn't it? It's not only a photograph, Mr. Oh, you must keep a sense of proportion, you know. Your inferiority complex is getting as big as the post office tower. You think you don't deserve it, don't you? Because she's beautiful and French and clever and you're just an ordinary middle-aged Englishman. Do you want to crucify yourself? You don't want to make progress. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Rainsworth, I get mixed up in separations, divorces, all kinds of things. I make my living fishing the scummy end of the pond. Now, that is not where you live. It's not where she lives. Have a talk to her. If you can't, forget all about it. Forget? With Ingleby in and out of here leering at me? I'll tell you one thing for nothing. Ingleby did not take that photograph. So you say. I know. Oh, he came across it. Yes, but he didn't take it. He doesn't know who did. And what's more, he's not your wife's lover. Never has been, never will be. Wouldn't want to be. You can't know that. Oh, yes, I can. How I can is none of your business. Just for once, take somebody's word for something. So you have made some progress. Well, if it isn't Ingleby, who is it? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I have to have a word with your wife first, keep an eye on her for a few days. No, no. Well, I can't find out anything blindfolded. You, you, you mustn't talk to her. Look, if I start asking other people questions, they're going to start thinking. Is that what you want? You want to start people wondering? They've already noticed the picture's gone from outside. That might be just enough to set them off. Either live with it, or have it out with her. You're being rational, Mr. Marker, but I don't think you're married. It's different when you're married. You've spent ten happy years building up a dream. I don't mean my dream or her dream, but our dream. Then one morning, just like any other morning, you come to work and you find that she's been living a lie. A secret life. Doesn't matter whether it's good or bad, it's a life that you don't share. You can't be part of a dream and a stranger at the same time. Look, I want you to go on with this. But I don't know what you expect me to find out if you won't let me question her and you won't let me follow her. I, I don't want her to think that I'm spying on her. Oh, you are a funny man. I don't like to take your money. 
I wish I didn't have to give it to you. We could have seen it. Mrs. Ainsworth! I remember no questions and no following. Uh, no, 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 not unless I have to. Jenny May. Go for your teak. Just want to choose a book. Oh, help yourself. Who's me? Just me. when you're finished knocking. No slipping them in your pocket more than what's in. I, I, I want the address of someone. Someone who has letters here. Oh, that's nice. But I, I must have it. It is life or death. What name? Box 30. I have to get in touch with him. Why? It is desperate, please. Something to do with the police? Yes. No, you write in the usual way, Doc. I'll see he gets it. A charge for three reads, you know. Yes, you do that, do you? But, but I must know where he is. I have to see him now. Perhaps you must. Nothing I hear says that I must. Box 30, eh? Let me see. No, I don't recall. Well, wait a minute now. It's coming back. I might know. Yes, it's beginning to get clearer. Yes, it's come back. All of a sudden. Oh, tell me. I'll jot it down. That's all I know.
And how did you get in here? What? The man downstairs. Mr. Marker? <laughs> it's a moral lesson. Well, I, I hope you will see me. I, I need your help. <laughs> I saw your advertisement in the local paper. I'm being blackmailed, Mr. Marker. You're not surprised? I never see anybody who hasn't got some sort of problem. Go on. Seven years ago, I... You met a man? Here or in France? Here. What was his name? Philip Busby. How long did it last? A few weeks. At first happy and then guilty. Seen him since? No. Heard from him? No, he, he went to sea. Oh, a bit drastic. He, he was an enthusiastic photographer. He wanted to take pictures of the whole world. A sailor can do that, I suppose. I don't even know if he is alive now. Oh, so you don't think it's him that's blackmailing you? No. Well, how did it all happen? I don't know how it happened. Uh, I do not make an excuse, but I remember as if it was somebody else. He took photographs of me, many, many photographs. One of them, just one, was without clothes. Not vulgar, it was a joke, a, a copy of a Velasquez painting. Ah, yes, I saw it in the local paper. Yes, but long before that, somebody else had seen it. Somebody who had a copy of the picture. They write, they will show it to my husband. What, well, now? Always. Every month I send five pounds. Where to? A, a box number, a shop. Every month I receive a little copy of the picture. No name, no address, just the picture. Well, how long have you been paid? Three years. <sighs> you took your time. You know, five pounds a month isn't very much, is it? Well, they never ask for more. But I don't mind, that's the truth. Now, the picture which I, I thought was safe, which I paid to be safe, is in the competition. And in the local papers, they just stopped paying. No, that's not why I'm here. I, I must find out how it got there. But most of all, I must find out if my husband has seen it. Why not ask him? Mr. Marker, I shall have to tell lies. I must be ready with the right ones. Look, we all tell lies to protect ourselves. To protect him? Oh, he would not hit me or swear at me. I, I wish he would. He would just die. I'm his world. I oh, suppose I told you I know something about that photograph. Suppose I told you that its being in the competition was an accident, a complete accident. But you cannot know. How did you first meet this Mr. Busby? At evening classes. I was doing English and he was doing photography. Oh, yeah, well, I'm sorry. I don't think I can help you. I will pay. No, there are reasons. There are other inquiry agents. We're all discreet. I love him. I love him as much as he loves me. I wanted to do it myself. I, I went to the shop. I, I got the address of the blackmailer. But I could not go in. Always I've been strong. I could not go in, Mr. Marker. But it looks as if I'll have to, doesn't it? Perfect singing. 
So you ought to give Sydney his money back. He'll learn. Good night, Jackie. Good night. Pauline's parlour. There's no more classes tonight. Oh. You can come tomorrow at six. Are you a beginner? No, 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 no. I want some special tuition. From Pauline. And knock you back two quid a time. Yeah, it's my, uh, it's my tango. Oh, she's got a silver cup for the tango. Hang on. Nine. A special tuition? That's all right, if you can. Well, come into the office, Mr. Marker. Thank you. Oh, aren't they nice? Oh, aren't they nice? Oh, yes, those are the days, eh, Mr. I'm not past it now, you know. No, 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 I'm sure you're not. Uh, two pounds, Mr. Marker. What now? All fees payable in advance. Is something wrong? I've got a headache. Where's the local paper? Paper? Yes, I forgot to take it with me this morning. I don't know. Perhaps I threw it out. I think I'll go out. It's so late? Where? Just for a walk. Breath of air. Shall be long. an occupational hazard, isn't it? Oh, no. I do a bit of green, though. Oh, yeah. Oh. There. That wasn't bad at all. Uh, shall we try it a bit quicker next yeah, time? Yeah, but, uh, but not tonight, eh? Oh, well, it's for you to say. Yeah, yeah. Are we really all alone in here? I mean, nobody else in the whole building. Oh, quite. The hot gospel is going at five. Oh, hello, hello. Remember that judo. <laughs> You know, I'm surprised you keep all your treasures in here. Oh, they're quite safe. Now, if you don't mind. Yes. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Will you call again? Oh, you can depend on it. Have gone to the town hall. Yeah, I know that, but I'm in a hurry, and anyway, I'm behind with the rates. Any luck? Oh, there are two rate pairs at that address the Church Militant Union. Yeah, I know about them, man. And a Mrs. Pauline Busby. Thank you. It's what you wanted. Busby, yes, exactly what I wanted. Thank you. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Uh, good morning, Mr. Ainsworth. Good morning, Mr. Marker. Good morning. What are you doing here? We're getting information. That's what he's for, isn't it? I thought you said you weren't making any progress. Ah, that was yesterday. Well, let it be today as well. I, I've thought about it. I, I want you to drop it. Well, well, why? Have you decided to make the best of a bad job? Well, we're not absolutely sure it is a bad job. Look, I'll pay you, of course, but... Well, your, your first advice was right. Just forget about it. I didn't think I could at first, but I, I, I want you to forget it and then... 
Later on, perhaps I will ask her. Are you sure? Yes, why don't you approve? Well, I was on my way to an answer. An answer? Yeah, and it might have been a bit more satisfactory than the one that you had Well, how do you mean satisfactory? Well, I don't know yet. It depends upon you. Will it take long? Should have an answer in, say, hour and a half from now. Here. Yes? Oh, it's you. How'd the tango go? Great, great. She asked me to come back this morning. She can't fit you in. We've got some kids. Kids? Tap. Did you hear the row? The off-gospelers don't off. Carry on. Uh. Make yourself comfortable. Thanks, Will. <coughs> Dirty cow. You'll behave yourself. You bet. you're doing. Waiting for you. Having a look round, you mean. But I haven't finished your cups. Yet. I thought you were shifty. The police will soon settle you. Yeah, how do you know I'm not the police? You wouldn't be alone and you'd show your card. Oh, it's no fooling you, is there? I liked you better last night when you were all smiles. Is that Philip? That's my husband, yes. I wonder how long it was before you stopped smiling at him. Are you a friend of his? No. But it's no concern of yours, is it? Get out. Yeah, but it is the concern of Mrs. Ainsworth. I don't know anyone of that name. Can you prove that? I don't have to prove anything except to the police that I found you rifling my desk. I'll get them for you. I'll give you the forms. Ah, Inspector Russell, please. This is Frank Marker here. Thank you. Keys. Thank you. We don't want secrets, do we? Not at our age. Oh. <laughs> do us a favour, eh? There's somebody waiting in a car downstairs, a mini. Ask them to come up. Not very many left out of six dozen, are there? He's quite a photographer, your husband. Did you leave him or did he leave you? You expect a woman to answer that truthfully? How long ago? I really don't remember. Seven years. What was it? Another woman? What's your angle? You want a divorce? Oh, I wouldn't know. I'm on her side. Ah, uh huh. So you had it all the time. It was among his things. I knew she was. So you put the squeeze on her for a five or a month? I've not had a penny piece out of him in seven years. Not sight nor sound of him. Was that her fault? Well, it certainly isn't mine. <sighs> and what's that supposed to mean? Look, mate, we were a good team, Philip and me. We made a lot of money, but it wasn't always easy. Sometimes it was pretty rough. Cheap hotels, dirty changing rooms, rotten Pauline, bags. you're breaking my heart. Don't be so clever, chum. He was my husband. Till some French piece comes along and he's off. Tough luck. Three years ago, I found that negative and I got it developed. She cost me four years of scraping. I reckon I was entitled to know what she looked like. Four years? Wait a minute. I thought you said he left you seven years ago. He did. It was three years ago, just after I'd taken on the lease of this place, that I saw her in the street and I followed her. That's when it all started. I reckon somebody owed me something for those four years. Once it started, it went on. I just wanted to make her pay. A five or a month, it's not much. Now the silly bitch gets you. Oh, she's not grumbling, but you know, that photograph or a dirty great enlargement of it was on exhibition at the local library. Can't be the negatives here. Doesn't her husband work at the library? He does. Well, that's not my doing. I don't care anymore. She must have other admirers. No. No, just a bit of bad luck. Your husband's talent, her good looks, dirty old man with a camera shop, and a nasty natured youth. Now, are you going to help me? Help you? Well, I could put the squeeze on you, you know. Would you? 
Do you know anything about photography? Not much. Well, can you pretend? Mrs. Ainsworth. Come in, Mrs. Ainsworth. This is Mrs. Busby. I'll be back in a minute. You don't remember me? No. We only met once. I see you quite often. Heard anything from Philip? No. He left me because of you. I don't think so. He was not in love with you. Long before he and I met... I'm sorry, it's what he said. I thought he meant it. I expect he did. And you didn't love your husband? I've always loved my husband. You could have fooled me. It was an adventure. Not necessary and not very happy. There was much point then, was there? I suppose I'm sorry I blackmailed you. Oh, no, I, I understand you. It'll have to stop now anyway. He says your husband knows. He has seen the picture I thought nobody else would see. And it matters? Yes. We'll have to think of something then, won't we? This is Mr. Ainsworth. Mrs. Busby took that photograph you've been worried about. Oh, years ago, she never even met your wife. You see, she used to be a very keen amateur photographer, didn't you? Why don't you uh, tell them how you did it? Yes. Well, at evening classes, we had this lovely model. A professional, of course, and I photographed her as Venus. The only thing was, she had a very plain face. So I put another one in the mirror. You see, it's quite separate. I cut the face from an old picture my husband took at his evening classes. It was of a girl, fully clothed, holding some flowers, I think. I only used the face. I didn't know who she was. I didn't know you, did I? It's just an exercise. Two pictures made into one. We were always doing it in those days. Yes, I, I, I was sure it was something like that. And the shop that does her processing did a spare print. I'm still trying to find out who submitted it. I I couldn't understand when I'd not posed for the picture. Yes, well, I now, if you'll excuse me, I really must see what my little monsters are up to. Thank you, Mrs. Busby. Thanks, Martha. I'm going to believe it. Yeah, I think you should. Well, it's an escape route. I've been looking for one. Oh, you'll be all right. Oh, something else you know. Yeah, well, I must know something, looking for all those keyholes. Oh, that's She did it deserve it. Yeah, whoever gets what they deserve. You know, you are pretty good, you know. That Cecil Beaton couldn't have been more convincing. You know you're not at all the sort of man I like. You don't know when you're well off. Mr. Marker. When do I get a lesson in tap? Thank you. 